We have another edition of Legally Speaking right now. And joining me, we have attorney Carol Thomas. Thank you for being here. Thank you. It's great to be back. Yes, of course. We love having you. So Thank we're talking you. about elder law, state planning trusts. Of course, uh, attorney Thomas as an elder law attorney, you draft trust, you draft wills. What other documents do you really prepare? Well, the other two very important documents are powers of attorney. And I wanted to ask you a question this morning. Okay. Do you know the difference between a lawyer and an attorney? And you know what? Do you? <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> I don't, but I should because my best friend is... A lawyer or an attorney? An attorney. Okay. Yeah. Well, the difference officially is a lawyer gives legal advice. Okay. So when I'm in my office and I'm um, talking to my clients, I'm giving them legal advice, I'm a lawyer. But an attorney is someone that goes to court and represents someone. Okay. So when I talk about these important documents, powers of attorney, it's documents you set up where you want someone to represent you if you're mentally incapacitated and can't represent yourself. Very good. What is the purpose of this financial power of attorney? And that is one of the most important ones. The financial power of attorney gives the right to someone to make financial decisions, do anything with real estate, pay your bills. It's mm. also our key to getting assets protected if someone is ever in a nursing home. You need a well-drafted financial power of attorney. And does that bring up a, a different kind of role, a medical power of attorney? And that's another interesting document. The medical power of attorney allows someone to make your medical decisions if you're not able to communicate with the doctor. Okay. And something very interesting, Blake, is Michigan does not recognize living wills. 47 states have living wills, so people are always talking about living wills. Mm -hmm. And a living will, you get to say, what do you want done in the hospital if you're not able to communicate? Mm -hmm. Michigan has this wonderful document where you say, who do you want to make the decision? Not something you've written maybe 20 years earlier. So right. I really like what Michigan has done. Oh, you think it's uh, moving it forward or helping I think it was patients? a very good decision. Very good. Yeah. Good to know. So if someone doesn't have these documents and becomes incapacitated, what, is, what happens next, I guess? It is so difficult for the families, and so many people don't have these documents done, both the financial and the medical. Mm -hmm. So then they have to hire a lawyer and go to court. And to make medical decisions, a guardianship has to be set up. To make financial decisions, a conservatorship has to be set up. And Blake, it's so hard on the families to have this incapacity issue with a loved one and now they have to hire a lawyer go to court it gets expensive yeah. it takes a long time very difficult and stressful very stressful yeah especially yes. when you want to focus on on your loved one mm -hmm. is there anything else you would love to share with us today well just I think going along the last point is get things done ahead of time yeah. don't put your family in the position that if you have a medical crisis now they're scrambling and trying to figure out what to do so get things done and it just makes it so much easier for everyone if we want to reach out to you and contact you, viewers at home, how can they do that? They can call my office at 989-793-2300. Attorney Thomas, it's always a pleasure. Thank you for coming in. Thank you, Blake. You're very welcome. So if you at home want more information on all of this, and you'll be able to learn the difference between a lawyer and an attorney like I did today, just go over to the hot link section on WNEM.com.